banished from Earth Classic Game Room broadcasts from the Intergalactic Space Arcade on its never-ending mission to review everything. Welcome to a special Classic Game Room. This is the 2015 Game of the Year Awards show where I'll be handing out awards to the best games that I played in 2015 regardless of what year they were released. The answer is in this book. I shall open this shortly. But first, let me start off by saying thank you for watching Classic Game Room. When I announced earlier in the year that I would be leaving CGR as my full-time job, I received thousands of comments and tweets and emails and Facebook posts from viewers all over the world, thank you. When people ask what I do, I tell them that I produce the greatest fan-supported video game review variety show on the planet. The Intergalactic Space Arcade is filled with games and game consoles because of you. But you and I don't have control over what's happened to the internet ad model out there, which does not favor a show that reviews obscure old games. Now, Classic Game Room Mark 1 ran from 1999 to 2000, and Classic Game Room Mark 2 ran from 2008 to 2015. But many of you suggested something in your messages to me. You suggested Patreon as a source of crowdfunding to continue the show. I talked to Patreon, tried to understand their business model. I think it's a great fit for Classic Game Room, which is why Classic Game Room Mark III will start a Patreon January 7th, 2016 at patreon.com. Twenty sixteen shall be known as the year of the Sega Mark III. Because I've got lots of great Sega Mark III games around here, and I have thousands of games and game systems and accessories sent by fans around the world. Awaiting review back Classic Game Room on Patreon, and let's keep it going. It takes anywhere between four and eight to ten or twenty hours to produce a Classic Game Room review, depending on, on what kind of game or accessory it is. So as you can see, funding is clearly a concern, and I think Patreon's a good way to keep it sustainable which is why I'm also going to make all new Classic Game Room reviews on the internet ad-free for the first two months. You'll be notified via Patreon's messaging service. When a new review goes up, you can watch it, no ads. If you're paying for the show, you shouldn't have to be bothered by ads. But wait, there's more. How about a podcast? I've had a whole bunch of ideas and sort of combined them into one here. Classic Game Room 2085 will be a monthly podcast, if this gets funded, where I'll be talking about video games and movies and music and comic books, hopefully getting some guests on the show as well. CGR 2085. And I haven't even gotten to the book yet. You want to see what's in this book? The answer is in this book. As I was working out some comic ideas earlier in the year, I came up with something that I uh, actually thought would make a better movie. Allow me to introduce Magnum Skywolf. I'll have more concept art for you on January 7th. Hunter Skywolf fights crime and beats up bad guys with his army of vehicles, including the El Camino custom van and supersonic helicopter called Magnum 9000. It's a parody of 80s action TV shows, by the way, in case you couldn't figure that out. Now, the Patreon will need to do really well to get that funded, but there's also other goals in there for part-time classic game room, full-time classic game room, and a bunch of tiers that fit your budget. So, January 7th, patreon.com. Are you ready for the awards show now? Grab a beer. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. This year's Classic Game Room Game of the Year Awards show is brought to you by beer. Sent to the show by Eric in Kogan Station, Pennsylvania. Thank you for the Tegernsee beer from southern Germany. And this year's beers are being opened by the fabulous Pac-Man bottle opener. Sent to the show by Jonathan from West Jefferson, Ohio. 
The first thing I'm doing if this show gets funded is buying a bigger map. Let's check out the Pac-Man bottle opener, which is magnetic, by the way. No more having to actually pick up the bottle cap after you open it. Pac-Man eats it, and then eats you. After he gets drunk and mistakes you for a power pellet, it's an easy mistake to make. Then he calls Ms. Pac-Man at 3 in the morning, and a few months later we get Junior Pac-Man. This is all because of beer. From Germany, it's awesome. Enjoy the show. This is always one of my favorite parts of the Game of the Year award show. I get to hang out in my arcade and drink beer in between takes. I'm gonna play some Centipede and Super Pac-Man. So thank you to Eric from Kogan Station, Pennsylvania, and John from West Jefferson, Ohio. Pac-Man and beer go well together. Mm. And that's a good beer too. So let's get the Game of the Year started. Coming in at number 10, the 10th best game that I played in 2015, regardless of year of release, is Warriors Orochi 3. 3. 3. Can you tell which one is the Pac Man bottle opener and which one is the Pac Man stress ball? Uh, 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 coming in at number nine, the ninth best game of 2015 is... Mm. So good. Starjacker for the Sega SG-1000. Starjacker. It's a great game, check it out. Coming in at number eight, the eighth best game of 2015 is controversial because it has stormtroopers in it. It's Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, I just saw the uh, new Star Wars movie yesterday. It's like the biggest, most expensive piece of Star Wars fan fiction ever. It's very good, although I wish they would have taken some chances with the writing. However, I do applaud their decision to not include Jar Jar. So, there you go. Number eight, Star Wars Battlefront. I like it. It's Star Wars, and it's fun. Coming in at number seven is a game with a three at the end of it. Rolling Thunder 3 for the Sega Genesis. Cheers to spies that can finally fire upwards. It's usually about halfway through these videos that the beers start to kick in. So I expect the end of this video to be interesting. Insert beer, output fun through the miracle of editing, that poor take was saved. That's part of what makes this show so expensive. That and the um, electric bill, which is pretty high. I'm looking at my notes. Number six, Rocket League for the PlayStation 4. Phenomenal game, had so much fun with this. Highly recommend Rocket League. Download it today, wherever great games can be downloaded for your Sega Mark III. A lot of people have asked me if I'm going to keep the studio, because I have to pay rent for this and that's not cheap either. Um, I guess that will be determined on January 7th. I would like to keep the Intergalactic Space Arcade. It may or may not remain, remain in this building, in this warehouse, I'm sorry, in this space station, but I would like to keep the studio space for filming and also get a bigger map. Ikea makes this awesome world map, it's huge. You can put it up on the wall. So I'd like to upgrade maps and obviously cameras since the old camera, which is sitting right there, died. Here, let me show you. There you go, everyone wave goodbye. Good camera, actually, uh, the auto settings were really nice. And all of the best of classic game room stuff was shot with this, hung it out the window of the car, and never dropped it or anything, it just eventually stopped writing to the cards, so. 
I don't know, I'm gonna upgrade next year depending how the Patreon does. So coming in at number five is a game you probably won't expect, but an awesome game, Exerian for the Nintendo Famicom. Check this one out, it's really good. This has got to be one of the greatest video game cartridges that I've ever seen. Every now and then I try to stop and just savor the taste. It's probably going to be a while until I have another one of these, but it's really good. And uh, I'm looking at number four over there in my notes. Can you guess what it is? Because we got four, three, uh, two, and then one. And I'm pretty sure you can guess what at least one of those games is. So uh, what, what's that leave the rest of them to be? How about something with, um, I don't know, cars that transform into robots? Does that give it away? That, that does give it away, doesn't it? It's Transformers Devastation. What an awesome game and such a surprise. Transformers Devastation is the fourth best game of 2015 and it actually came out in 2015. So, Transformers Devastation. Because Citizen Kane doesn't have talking robots that transform into things. What's up everybody? It's Sega Genesis fanboy Mark coming to you with the power of blast processing. Filling in for past Mark, who's currently passed out Mark under the table. Actually, he's just grabbing lunch right now. But I'm bringing you the third best game of the year, 2015. You know what it is? Can you guess? That's right. It's Laser Gates on the Atari 2600. What a great game. I can't believe it took me this long to play it. Third best game of the year, 2015, even though it was released, you know, like 30 years ago. But it's an awesome game. Laser Gates, Laser Gates, Gates of Lasers. In between takes, I was actually plugging some lights in over there, and I wiped out my high score on Centipede. So this is like a brand new fresh start in 2016. In fact, at the end of this video, I'm gonna go for a new high score, which well, shouldn't be too hard seeing as how the default one is up there on screen now. Because Sega Genesis fanboy Mark is good at Centipede. Nobody likes you! Alright everyone, before I move on to the second best game of 2015, I'm going to grab another beer from uh, Tegernseer, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not. It's the Dunkel Export. And I love a good Dunkel, or Dunkel. With the Pac-Man bottle opener in hand, we'll open this up. The power of magnets holds the bottle cap in place. Pac-Man not only eats power pellets, but bottle caps that give him power. Yes, I'd like to drink to that, and I will. Hmm. All right. Here on Classic Game Room, I don't think I can have a respectable Game of the Year show without at least one award going to a game on the Vectrex. That's right. The second best game of 2015, Fortress of Narzad on the Vectrex. This is such a cool game. And I brought my Vectrex to a game show earlier in the year. And I think at least three or four people offered to buy it for me. I said no. I'll, I'll take $100,000 for it, but that's it. And I did introduce a lot of people to the Vectrex and Fortress of Narzad. Everyone loves the Vectrex because it's amazing. The second best game of the year, Fortress of Narzad. Cheers to you, Vectrex. <laughs> this beer keeps getting lower in between takes. It's about that time. Grab a seat and hold on to something because it's classic game room, game of the year time. What's the best game that I played in 2015? What's number one? The award for classic game room, game of the year 2015 goes to Earth Defense Force 4.1 with giant robots, insects, and space bees. This game is amazing. Earth Defense Force 4.1. EDF! 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 What's that noise? Roxton. You hear that? Wait. Oh no. Uh -oh. Did I forget you one? You forgot Roxton. 
I did, didn't I? Uh oh. Nobody puts Truxton in a corner! Hey, Truxton, buddy, look, you're so amazing, I can't even give you a number rating because you defy numbers, so you're like the infinite best game ever. Yes, this is true! Truxton! Spaceships of Red Bull and Green, you can hear the alien lady scream, we want Truxton! Yo, what's up everybody? This is Future Mark coming to you from the future, the year 2085. Hey, I'd like to thank all of you for supporting Classic Game Room way back when in 2016. Because unbeknownst to you, Earth will be invaded by aliens, robots, and monsters in the year 2084. And Classic Game Room, with its mastery of obsolete technology and laser discs, is able to save the Earth from invasion because of you. Thank you for your support. Saving existence and rocking Truxton. By the way, my podcast is awesome. I record it on futuristic laserdisc time travel technology and send it back to you in the past. In fact, the first two episodes are my love affair with Star Wars and why the Sega Genesis is the greatest video game system in the history of ever. It's a pretty sweet show. Laser discs. So there you go, congratulations once again to Truxton and Earth Defense Force 4.1, two games that deserve to be Game of the Year 2015. And before I go, I want to read one of the messages that was sent to me after I uh, made my announcement earlier in the year on a copy of Field Commander for the PSP. Major Tom or Major Thom says, thank you. Thanks for years of entertainment. Your show meant more than you can ever know. I actually teared up when I read this, and I'm not a very emotional guy. Uh, it's because of comments like this that I'm willing to make a change. And actually, I think Classic Game Room's best years can be ahead of it if I can break the show free of the ad model and concentrate on making the show fun and informative rather than trying to scramble all over the place attempting to pay for it. So. Patreon can fix this. Please consider backing the show. I will make it worth your while. And you get a kick-ass podcast to go with it. And if it does really well, who knows? Maybe even a movie. Back to the show where I destroy space. Space! If you have any other questions about Patreon, check out their website. It's up on screen now. It's like a Kickstarter, but ongoing, like a subscription model. And you can also ask me questions at twitter.com slash classic game room or on Facebook. So... 2016, year of the Sega Mark III, year of classic game room Mark III with three marks. Past Mark, future Mark, and technically incompetent Mark working together to bring you a great show, a podcast, and maybe even Magnum Skywolf. See you on January 7th. Thank you. Magnum Skywolf fighting for the future of the world. He's a detective mercenary investigator. He finds the bad guys and shoots them. Then he backs over them later with his custom van because you know Skywolf is the man. Magnum Skywolf fighting for the future of the world. Ow. Yo, who reset the high score on Centipede? I gotta break that. It's a new year after all. Thanks for watching. Coming to you from Future Mark, Past Mark, Sega Genesis Fanboy Mark, and the murderous Truxton Arcade Machine. It's Classic Game Room. Hoping to see you in 2016, all the way through to 2084, when it saves the universe. And is then rebooted as Classic Game Room Mark IV in 2085. That's right. I've thought this through. Using my brain from the future.
that's respectable. Happy New Year.